I said, Lord, if you don't agree with me smoking cigarettes, uh, then you're going to have to take that away from me. I've tried to quit, and I can't. I've tried and tried, but I can't quit. I can't do it on my own. But if you don't agree with it, if you don't want me to smoke, then I'm asking you to take take it away from me. Stay good day. Welcome, my friends, to The Storyteller, where you'll find First Nations people from across Native North America who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. Today we'll hear the final part of Alan Jolly's story as he shares what happened when he put his trust in Jesus Christ. The friend of mine that I was working with, one day he said to me, uh, uh, when are you going to accept the Lord? And uh, in those days, uh, you know, you could still smoke uh, even in public buildings at the hospital. So we're sitting there in a cafeteria and he asks me that question. When are you going to accept the Lord? I said, I, I don't know. I don't think I can do it. And he said to me, why not? And I was sitting there with a cigarette in my hand. And I said, I can't do it because of this. And I, I just lifted up my cigarette between my two fingers in front of him. I can't, I can't quit smoking. I, I don't know why I thought that. I mean, I didn't read anything in the Bible that says that smoking is sin. I, I don't know. I just thought in my head, well, if you're a Christian, you can't smoke. I said, well, I, I can't. I can't accept the Lord because I'm still smoking. And you know, he told me something that day. He says, uh, you know what? That's not the most important thing about you smoking. The important thing is if, if you know you need to accept the Lord, then you should do that. And he said to me, don't you think the Lord can take care of that too, the cigarette? If the Lord can forgive you your sins, don't you think he can deal with that cigarette as well? And I didn't say anything more. I, those words came ringing in my ear all through that day. And the more I thought about it, then it made sense to me. Yeah, if the Lord can forgive me of my sins, which were many, surely this, this cigarette is nothing to him. That's what I thought. And that day or the next day, I did something I, in, 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 a, in a roundabout way. I was praying to the Lord and I said, Lord, if you don't agree with me smoking cigarettes, uh, then you're going to have to take that away from me. I've tried to quit and I can't. I've tried and tried, but I can't quit. I can't do it on my own. But if you don't agree with it, if you don't want me to smoke, then I'm asking you to take Take it away from me. You know what? In three months' time, the Lord did take that cigarette away from me. I remember uh, one morning I woke up. I had no craving for a cigarette. And, and, and now the other amazing thing was the fact that I didn't take a cigarette to smoke. I didn't have any craving, so I didn't bother taking one. And I said, well, I'll, do, I'll take one probably by noon. Noon came by, no cigarette. Uh... Oh, maybe by supper time I'll have a cigarette. Supper time came around, no craving, and I didn't take one either. And then later on this evening, before I go to bed, I'll probably want to smoke. No craving, and I didn't take one. You know, I went through that whole day without a cigarette, and that was it. The craving was gone, and and I never smoked again. You know, that's going back like almost 40 years to this very day. So to this day, I really believe that I did something, what, what I understand now today is what the Lord wants from each and every one of us, that we would learn to put upon Him our dependence on Him to help us in every situation, more so when it comes to salvation. We, there's not a thing that we can do to save ourselves. It, it's all the Lord's doing. All we have to say to Him is, yes, Lord, I believe. I believe in you. And we learn to cast all our cares, all our wants, all our desires upon Him. And that's not an easy thing to do. I mean, I should have learned my lesson from that day, but I didn't. You know, even after 40 years, I realized a lot of times that I'm trying to run my own life and not really depending on the Lord as I should. Only now as I get older, I do understand that, that I need to do that, that I need to trust the Lord, depend on the Lord and to cast all my my needs upon him and then to wait on him so i did eventually accept the lord 
to believe in the Lord is really to believe in in Jesus, the person that he was, that he was a a real person, and in fact that uh, that he came from heaven, that he as the Son of God, that he was in heaven before he came to this earth, and then the God the Father uh, sent him down to this earth to do a specific work in order to redeem us, to provide redemption for us. Not only for us, but really the world itself and, and, and everything that, that's been affected by sin, redemption, but primarily to bring redemption to us. And so the salvation that God has provided in the Lord Jesus Christ is God's own work, God's own initiative. And all he asks of you and I is that that we believe, that we believe in Jesus, we believe in, in what happened to Jesus, that he died on the cross, and then that he was resurrected from the dead on the third day. And when we read the Bible, it does say to believe in the Lord. So believing is mainly just responding to the Lord from our heart, and that we desire the Lord, we want the Lord. That That's coming from our heart, and we're just saying, yes, Lord, come into my life. When I did that, when I when I called on him in that sense, that, that I said I was looking for him, I wanted to know him, then he saw my heart and he responded to that, and and he he came into my life at that moment. And I and I, I didn't necessarily feel anything, but there was a manifestation about the evidence of it, and as the Lord began to let me know that he was now in me, he was doing some new things, good things in my life. And that's when I realized that the Lord had answered my prayer. My wife, I uh, remember I, I was talking to her and I was saying to her, if we want to have a good marriage, a good life, I think our only option is, is, is to become Christians. Now that's the way I put it to her at that time. And uh, if we want to get away from drinking and all that kind of stuff, if we don't want to go down that road, I think our only option is, is to become Christians. And I, I do remember re reading a statement in, uh, I believe it was in the magazine there by Billy Graham, when he made a point to say, if you want to lead your family in the way of true happiness, then show them to the way of heaven. I remember that comment. And I thought about that for a bit, and I thought to myself, yeah, that's right. That's the only true and lasting happiness. If I can lead my wife and our children that we're going to have to show them the way to heaven, and for them to have a personal experience and a personal knowledge that they're going to heaven, that's the best gift I can, I can give my children. And it was one of the, one of the thoughts or reasons, I guess, why... I turned to God or I turned to Christ because I wanted to lead my family uh, the right way of life. And I'm sure we all desire that. All of us, we want the best life for ourselves and for our children. To me, after 40 years being, being a Christian, I would have to say, knowing the Lord as I do in a personal way, that's the only life there is to live, knowing God and uh, finding meaning and purpose in your life every day because of God being in your life. Understanding what God is doing, the work that God is doing today, where God is, is going in terms of the future, what He will eventually do. So that's been my, my journey now, like I said, spanning over 40 years. Over those years, uh, the Lord has become more and more as a person in my life. And, I, and I'm still striving to want to know Him more and more, to get deeper and deeper in my relationship with Him, in my walk with Him. And as I, as I understand more of the, the gospel message and, and the overall message of the Bible, I'm just uh, amazed what God has done or what God has provided for us to be saved in the first place and then for us to stay saved and he's done everything needed and necessary for our salvation.
what God has done. In fact, I can't remember where the verse is found, but uh, it does tell us that it was necessary that Christ should suffer and that he should die. But it also goes on to tell us that he was raised from the dead on the third day. So really the, the plan of salvation that God has put in place, has accomplished, is through the person of Christ, through his, his death, his burial, and then his resurrection, and then by his very life. And then the Bible tells us that today Jesus is back in heaven. He went back to heaven after he accomplished that work, the work on the cross, the finished work involving his death and his resurrection. And it is through that means that God has provided salvation to each and every one who would only believe in the Lord Jesus. In Romans uh, chapter 10, well, I'll read the verse 9. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now the word ashamed there is also uh, disappointed. It can read like this, uh, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be disappointed. And I can say to this day, the Lord in, in more ways than one, he, he has not disappointed me. And uh, when I sought him for salvation, I didn't know it at that moment that I was seeking him for salvation. But as I, as I realize it now, that's the first thing that needs to happen in our, in our life is that we need to be saved from our sin. And, and God has provided that means of salvation for us. As I mentioned in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ through his death, through his resurrection and by his very life. So... I can testify to that fact that when I sought the Lord that I wanted to find a better way of life as the way I put it, but really that I needed to be saved, He didn't disappoint me. Salvation was there and ready for me. And all I had to do was, was to believe in Christ for it. One of the verses uh, I like to quote here is that in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, when it comes to the salvation that God has put in place, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And of course, that name is, is Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and even here, what I read, that there's no salvation in any other other than Jesus. I know if you think about that on your own, if you don't read the word and you start to say, well, there's more than one way. Everybody's religion is okay. That's the way people talk today. But that's not what the Bible teaches. Jesus said that he's, he's, he's the way. He's the only way. He, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Want to know more? Visit our website, withoutreservation.com, and click on the tab, New Life. Or download the Storyteller radio app and choose Hope. You can also write to us at The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. That's P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. Thanks for listening. And remember, the greatest story took place at the cross. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. My friends, there are more amazing stories to tell, so be sure to join us again next time as we listen to The Storyteller.